I really haven't read such a genuine book in a long time. <laughs> okay. Hello friends, my name is Troy. Welcome back to Troy Reads. Today we have got a giant video reflecting over the massive amount of books I've read in 2020. So yeah, due to the whole COVID-19, I read <laughs> double my goal. This was just an insane year for me in terms of reading. Let's just get started. We're gonna go into my Goodreads and look at all the books I read, all the pages I read, some reviews that I wrote. Like, it's gonna be a great video. I just, I already filmed it. So yeah, I know it's a great video, but make sure to always leave a like on my videos, subscribe, consider subscribing, it's free. And basically I have a fun bookish content every Wednesday and Saturday. So what's not to subscribe to? <laughs> make sure to comment down below what books you read this year or how many you read this year because I know some of you guys wouldn't be able to even list them. All right, let's jump straight into it. Gotta start my screen recording. All right, you guys are now viewing my screen and my year in books 2020 on Goodreads. Make sure to go down in the description if you haven't already and click my social media Goodreads link and you can follow me and friend me there and it's really cool to have a lot of bookish people on there to kind of talk to. So this year I read 54,907 pages. That's like double the amount I read last year. That's crazy. I had never thought I'd even go over like 30,000 pages read to read 50,000 pages in one year. That's like insane. That's like a thousand pages per week. And then I read 133 books, which technically I read 132. So take that into account. I'll, I'll share like why, what happened. There's like the technical error that happened. I liked my own thing. Anyways, the shortest book that I read this year was The Tales of Beetle the Bard and it was 109 pages. That's a freaking short book. I'm proud of that. That. Although usually I'm not proud of my shortest book. I, I, I'm usually more proud of the longest book, which was Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Ooh, both of this is scary because it's by JK Rowling. Both of them are by JK. Ooh, she holds my longest and my shortest. Don't know how to feel about that, but the average book length in 2020 was 412. I'm average out across all the books. I think that's a pretty good average. I think it's slightly lower than my previous average last year. And I think that's a good number. Like usually if a book is starting to get higher than that, that's like my sign of not really wanting to to read it but i did have some really big books this year in terms of most popular another jk rowling book we've got harry potter and the sorcerer's stone with 9 million 539 people shelved this that's a lot even just the 43,539 plus 9 million <laughs> in terms of least popular we have thomas willis and the wizard of sumeria with only 131 people having shelved this book and this was actually a book sent to me by the publishing company i think it was by book publicity services those always tend to be my lowest and my least popular, which I kind of like. It's like the author needs kind of like my review to kind of get more people's eyes on the book. And I also get to read like, you know, less popular books. So it's, it's like a win-win for me. My average rating for 2020, 4.7 stars. That is not bad. That's a high rating. I actually didn't really rate a lot of books this month or this year. Probably rated like maybe like 15 books in total, maybe a little bit more. The highest rated on Goodreads is Never Seen by Shannon Messenger. We'd love to see it because that is my favorite book in the world. Ooh, coinc coincidence not. Um, 4.66 average on Goodreads. That's incredible. My first review of the year. Okay, now remember this. I remember writing this because I was so passionate about that. I just finished the book and I was like, I need to divulge all my feelings. And I wrote this really crazy review. So I don't know, I'm just gonna read it to you. All right, here we go. Why do I see so many one-star reviews? This book was absolutely amazing in almost every element. This book follows Shane, a quirky, fun, and shy girl who's studying abroad in London. She travels to London after realizing that her college life absolutely sucks. Shane must find a way to live out her life as she wants it and also tell Pilot how she truly feels before her whole world crumbles around her. <laughs> I'm already cringing. One of the main reasons why I adored this book was the relatability to a lot of events. Not only do I enjoy and have traveled out of country before, but I have somewhat of a similar parenting, way less harsh. <laughs> oh, okay. And I aspire to be a writer like the main character of the story, Shane, and have a lot of knowledge about European countries. All of this made for a really relatable read and it was super cool and entertaining to read events. <laughs> I'm just done with that paragraph. Another reason why I love this book is that the characters are super developed and also is super unique. We have Shane, a quirky, funny, and shy character. We have Pilot, a cool, musical, and loving character. My sentence structures need to be more like unique there. I also really appreciate Christine Riccio bringing a lot of real life issues into this book and showing her support for them. I really like the topics of LGBT plus rights, many LGBT characters, which on second thought, there's like one, <laughs> racial equality, self-harm, divorce, and much more. And of course, I'm in absolute love with the theme of the novel. Don't let others choose your path. Do what you want to do. I thought this was super powering and moving to me across the story. I thought it was such a good message by Christine Riccio 
yeah, I said, this is getting long. Okay, anyways, overall, this was a brilliant, funny, and powerful story full of unique characters, real and hard hitting issues, and very relatable as well. I'll be reading this every year for the clarity and power it holds and finding what one book wants to do and how to pursue it. The most important thing that I took from this book is that if you want to do something or be somewhere, start walking and fight to get there. Ooh, that just hit different, didn't it? I actually read this book two times this year because it was just so powerful to me. I might, I might have went a little bit too overboard with this review, honestly. Like, it wasn't that great. It wasn't, like, life-changing, but it was pretty, it was pretty darn good. So, let's just jump into the My 2020 Books section, which is literally my hundreds of books that I read. So, I guess let's just get us started. With January, we read Again But Better, my first review of the year. We finished Akatar by Sarah J. Mass. We read Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. Oh, Truly Devious was just amazing. Cinder, another amazing. Those two books were gifted to me during Christmas. Then we got A Quarter Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Mass, which was terrible. It was like a spinoff. Um, Scythe by Neil Schusterman. Oh, this, these were the February books. These three, Scythe, The Cool Prince, and Three Dark Crowns. It was a pretty good reading month because I read only three books. I was just like focused. <laughs> Apparently not focused. But we got The Leveler by Julia Durango. Oh, we started reading Keeper Lost Cities in March after my trip in Arizona. After that, I picked up my first first audiobook ever, which was To Best of the Boys by Mary Weber. Then I moved on to the Unwanted series. Oh, and then we had this big day where we did the 24-hour readathon, and I read three books in that day. I read Divergent, then The Explorers, and then the BFG. I continued Unwanted's Island of Silence. Then we have Warrior of the Wild, my second audiobook ever. And then we're moving on to the next month, which started with The Twits and the Magical Readathon. Then we are The Wrap. Welcome to Superhero School, which was an arc sent to me, which was beautiful. Loved it. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. We started reading the Harry Potter series. Then we took a break, we read The Who, The Hatchet, and then we read The Goblet of Fire, A Curse of Dark and Lonely. Then we finished the Magnus Chase series. Mm, love that series by Rick Riordan. And then we finished the Harry Potter series. And then we picked up the Velocity series again. It's a lot of like back and forth. <laughs> then we read Lodestar, and I blah, blah, blah. We ended on a flashback, then I read the whole Hunger Games series. So you can see I'm just really bad at finishing series and starting a new one. <laughs> then we finally finished the series. Then we read The Chills of Beard of the Bar real quick. And then we picked back up again and the Unwanted's. And then then, oh, there's a notification. Then we read The Unwanted's, and then we read The Unwanted's Quest. Then we read another dragon sort of book, A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. Then I started the Aragon series. Then I read Slay for a book club. Then I read the book Back at the End, The Battle of Songbirds and Snakes. Oh, that was amazing. Why is the Island of Fire right there? It should be over there. See, there's a lot of technical difficulties in this whole making, but then we have two wimpy kid books because they're just amazing. Uh, the Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. This was definitely five stars. The Starless Sea, another five-star book, just incredible. We've got Eldest from Christopher Pellini. Finally, you got in the second book. Then I read the um, book sent to me that I kind of talked about before. This was an audiobook that I loved. It was for a book club, but if it's us, False Prince, love this. I got this for my birthday. Time was the Homo Sapiens Agenda, an audiobook, Fable Haven. Got this sent to me. Then I started Rangers Apprentice series. I started Artemis Fowl and I hated it. The Land of Roar by Jenny. Ma oh, I love this one. The Tale of Despero. I read this one again. The Explorer, not so great. Get a Life, Chloe Brown. Then we read Red Wall. Oh, and then we started the Carry On series by Rainbow Rowell. Clap When You Land, another book club book. Didn't enjoy it too much on hindsight, but I did enjoy it when I was reading it. Finish Wayward Sun, which is the second book in Carry On. One of Us is Lying. Definitely five star and definitely my favorite of that month. Oh, I read The Lightning Thief again. Uh, I read The Infinity Sun. I read the second book to A Ranger's Apprentice. Then I read Call Me By Your Name. The Hate You Give, which was so empowering. You Should See Me in a Crown. Another empowering one. The Girl Who Drank the Moon, Halloween related. The Black Flamingo, which was just a short kind of LGBTQ plus like audiobook. And then I read The Icebound Lamb, which was part of the Rangers Apprentice series. I read Brazinger, finally. Like I read these books throughout the last six months of the year. An Enchantment of Ravens, another uh, Rangers Apprentice book. Ooh, then we read the Sarah J. Mass Crescent City, which was just absolutely charming. Just loved everything about it. Then I read The Witches for Halloween. Then we dived into the Wings of Fire series. Yes, we read Wings of Fire book one, book two, book three, and then in between that, I finished the second book in the Fable Haven series. Then I started on Warcross and Wildcard by Mary Lou while also reading Jordan Green in the middle of it. Then I read Legacy again, which was the previous book, and then I read The Unlock, which was the new release of Sarah for Santa Messenger. A Number in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. I really don't know why it says I've read it two times. That's like really stumping me. You know what? We're just gonna ignore that. We're just gonna ignore that because I really think I put it in one time. But then we have books four, books five, book six, book seven, book eight, book nine, book ten. Oh wait, no, this is book four, five, six, seven, eight. No, this is not eight. Nine. No, this is eight, nine, ten. <laughs> and then in between that, we read Steady Gold by uh, Tully McSmith, The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper, and Loot by Jude Watson. 
Then a Torch Against the Night by Sabbath to Here, Matilda, and Inheritance finally returning to that series. Then we finally finished The Fork, The Witch, and the Worm, finishing all the Christopher Pellini books. And then we delved into Sarah J. Mass, as well as reading another Ranger's Apprentice book, and then finishing Wings of Fire book 10, or no, this is 11, book 12. And then I don't know why it says I read this one. That was like the one I was talking about before. It's like, I have not read that Wings of Fire book that I'm circling right now. I haven't. Um, but yeah, then we read the Sarah J. Mass books, of course, Assassin's Blade, Crown of Midnight, Throne of Glass, Air of Fire, Conchita, blah, 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 blah. What else? Yeah, I think that's it. I, the, basically, throughout the year, I was just reading some Ranger's Apprentice, Throne of Glass, and Wings of Fire. Alrighty, for the last review of the year, which this technically wasn't even the last review of the year, because I wrote this review like two years ago, which it, I'll show, I'll point out all my flaws to this, but that book was so, so, so amazing. <laughs> the fact that it was so emotional, I teared up. says a lot. I did not tear up at this time, but see, that was just two years ago, me. I really haven't read such a genuine book in a long time. <laughs> okay. The adventure was phenomenal, and along the way, the, the characters, the characters developed a great deal and learned so much deep revelations about their self, the world, and the magic system. I was laughing at sometimes. Where did I laugh in this book? Crying, angry. When was I angry in this book? The adventure that these char the, these char actors went through was so unbelievably good and emotional. A fabulous continuation of the Throne of Glass series. I can't wait to read the next few. So yeah, that was my last review year, which technically wasn't, but whatever. The 2020 reading challenge, I read basically double my reading challenge, which was crazy. Because I went from like reading like five Five books a year or five books a month over here to reading like 20 books a month in this last month like I can't even s scroll all I can't even like have all of them in one tab there you go that's my 2020 reading challenge for 2021 if you go into my profile I set my challenge for uh, 120 books so I've read a zero of 120 books and I'm one book behind schedule hmm I need to finish stuff anyways that wraps up this reading wrap up. <laughs> so guys, that wraps up my crazy chaotic reading year. I cannot wait to see how 2021 treats me in terms of reading. I know that quarantine severely increased my reading, but what's going to happen next year? I'm eager to find out. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like as always. I really, really appreciate it as it does go long ways to support my channel. Consider subscribing down below for more bookish content. It's free. You can always unsubscribe if you want, which makes my heart break, but like it's up to you. And I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday now. So sorry if you thought I was gonna post on Monday because I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> Happy reading guys. I love you so much I'll leave the last video up there comment down below how many books you read this year and maybe how many pages if you calculated that I would love 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 to know and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye